And Brother O.J., we go over sort of prayer. Bless the heavenly Father. We want to thank you once again, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be in your house today, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'll be with Brother Brad as he delivers a message to us, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'll give us the understanding and the wisdom, Lord, that we need. This is something, Lord, we need to pray for every day of our lives, Lord. We need to put you in front of everything in our lives. Yeah, because Lord, we ask that you'll answer each and every prayer request that's lifted up to you here today. And Lord, we know you will answer those prayer requests in the way that you know is best for us. Lord, we ask these things. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. <laughs> As you face the unknown You spent so many sleepless nights Trying to work it out Worry has consumed your faith With all its fear and doubt But worry, but worry ends Where faith begins When you put it in God's hands and leave it there, oh, just leave it there. He's still in control, so trust in Him and take a hold of faith again. For worry ends where faith begins. 
Why should we ever worry? Why should we fret at all? When worry only hinders the mighty hand of God. He says it is impossible to please Him without faith. So rise, worry, walk on in Jesus. Sheep. 
Yeah. Okay, you can tell right off the bat that that's a sheep. And you know what? I'm tired of people telling me that they're they're all right. Yeah. You ask the right. average person around here. I do. I know not too long ago I talked to a neighbor over here, and uh, oh, I'm saved. But uh, you know, and you can tell uh, they all feel that they're a sheep. Sheep and goats are not the same thing. That's right. And you you find uh, as I we went to Laura's aunt died this week. Went to a funeral Friday, and they didn't have much of a funeral. But they did have at the gravesite uh, a young man. He was he was not used to it. He was a youth minister, and he came and he did just a little thing. And I don't know how many times he said it. And I wanted to stand up. You know, I wanted to get in there. And he said, "You're all going to get to see her again." Mm. He said it many times. I thought, don't say that again. Because <laughs> I know there were folks there, probably many folks that were there that were goats. We're not all sheep. That's right. That's right. And I wanted to say, you get to say it if you become a sheep. Amen. By the way, we're all born goats. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Mm. And so uh, I want to make it clear this morning. I, you know what? I want to make sure you're a sheep. If you're a sheep, it feels good. Amen. Now, I, want, I want to make it clear, amen, before you leave, amen, now. Don't be fooled. There's many folks that are goats and say they're sheep. And you say, well, I feel like I'm one. It's not a feeling, folks. That, praise God, it does feel good. It's a fact. And I want to just share some things, amen. Uh, and by the way, as a, I know the, the fair, the, we're going to go to the fair tomorrow night, I think we are, there, there in Jenny's County over by Madison. And, and, Oh, yeah, Je Jefferson County. I don't even know where I'm at. I'm going to a fair. I, I know the difference between a sheep and a goat, though. Amen. <laughs> and and uh, we'll be over there. And you know what? Uh, we know a little bit about that. They, uh, we used to have those sheep, and we used to get them sheep hauled up, take over to that fair there. And you know what I found out? They did, there's a judging that goes on. Now, even if you're a goat, you might be a grand champion goat, you're still a goat. Hmm. But you know what I noticed? They got some bad goats, too. <laughs> I also noticed they got sheep, and we'd go in there, and the, you, we never got the grand champion. I don't think we ever got the reserve champion. We're just plain old goats. And there's some bad goats. You know, as the children of God, we're not all grand champions, are we? Yeah. Do you know what? We ought to strive to be a better goat. I mean, a better sheep. Amen. <laughs> we got too many trying to be good goats. Boy, I got me all mixed up here. <laughs> Pray for me. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Lord. You know what? I, I just want to share a few things here. The difference. It's amazing. I've done this. I've shared this before. And it's, I, I really, I was intrigued. Jesus used these animals for a reason. That's right. He just didn't pick any animals. He says, you, you on the right hand, you're the sheep. You're going to glory. You on the left hand, you're the goats. You're not going to get to go. And uh, as I first thought, you know, first of all, a goat and a sheep, they do look different. Now, but the fact of the matter is there's a lot of different breeds. You're going to find out. They're not all the same. And some, it, it is hard. I've seen a picture. I, I could show a picture. I had a slideshow. If I had one of the big PowerPoints, I'd say, what do you think it is? <laughs> You know, you say, I think it's a goat. No, it's a sheep. It's a sheep or it's a goat. And some of them, it's a little hard to, to quite tell. But the fact is, you know what? You've got to be able to tell. I want to be able to look like a sheep. I want the world to be able to tell I'm saved, amen. Yep. I, but you know what? I've been fooled. There's been times I've gone knocking on a door and I thought, oh boy, I, I tell you what, I'm in a bad spot here. I can tell. There's probably grubs here. That's all over. Then I get to the door and boy, I look at the character and I thought, oh why? Sure enough. You know what I find out? They're a sheep. <laughs> you know, we got a, a mentality in our mind where everyone ought to look. God looks on the heart, doesn't he? Yeah. And praise God, he knows our hearts here this morning. He does. But as I was reading about a coach and sheep, there's one thing that will distinguish. Now, you may look like a sheep. You may dress like a sheep. You may have all those characteristics of a sheep. But he said there's one thing that will stand out for you to be able to tell whether it's a sheep or a goat. 
know what you got to do? You got to rid around on the back end. You got to look at the tail. A goat's tail is up in the air. I kind of thought there's some pride there. I tell you what, the sheep tail points down. That's how you tell. So next time you go to the fair, you're a little confused about I don't know what that is. Uh, maybe someone asks you, is that a goat or a sheep? You say, right, let me look here. You know what you got to do? You got to get on the back side. You know, you got to follow them around a little bit. You know, a lot of folks say, well, I'm saved. I'm all right. I'm going to heaven. You know what? Just follow them around a little while. You know what you'll find? The true colors. And uh, you know, it's not always easy. But uh, you know what, this morning, I hope you can say I'm a, I'm a sheep. You know what, you may put on the mask, you may put on the coat, you may put it on, but deep down in this morning, you know if there was a day in your life, you got right with Him. Amen. And don't be satisfied with being a good goat. Good goats ain't going to get to heaven. A lot of good goats. They're even better than some bad sheep. But praise God, amen. Well... You'll find the Bible, I like that one I shared here recently. He was the one, he was dwelling in the tombs. He was running around naked. And you know what there? Jesus came and touched him, got the devil out of him. And you know what they found him the next day? He's sitting there clothed in his right mind. Amen. Woo! It's a change that takes place, amen. That's right, amen. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, along with that, there's a difference in the, you know, there's a difference in the look. Sometimes you've got to look a little hard, amen. But there's a, there's a, I put a different comfort you know, a goat and a sheep have a different coat. Uh, the sheep, they got wool, don't they? This is something that physically, yes, we can notice. You know, a, you know what a sheep does? They're willing, now they don't necessarily willing, but here's what they do in their lifetime. They give of themselves, don't they? That's right. You know what they give? They give a coat. That's right. They give that wool. So I'm just thinking on that. You know what they give? They give comfort. That's right. You might have something, boy, I got that wool thing on. It's nice and warm or whatever it is. It's nice and soft. They produce comfort. The Bible said we should present our bodies a living sacrifice. You know what? The sheep, while they're alive, they sacrifice that coat, don't they? Yeah. You know what they're giving? And praise God, I like this. Comfort. Amen. You know what you and I, as a sheep, have? I've got some comfort. Sure. You know what? We say, he lives, he lives. How do I know he lives? He lives within my heart. It's yeah. comforting, isn't it? Yeah. And you know what a sheep does? They give that comfort to one another. You know, if I'm down at the hospital, and if I've got a doctor there, you know, I sure would like to have a sheep doctor. Amen. Amen. Yeah. One that says, we're going to put it in God's hand. Amen. When the surgeon comes and he says, well, I don't know, I'm kind of shaking it. Amen. We're going to put it into God's hand. God is going to take her. You know, that's comforting to me to know that God is here. God is going to get me through that. You know what sheep do? We produce that comfort. Yeah. When you're down at the funeral home, I tell you what, I've been in the funeral home with a bunch of lost folks. And I tell you what, there's not much comfort there. But then I've been there with the law to save the sheep, amen. And they say, praise God, amen. We know that that one's in heaven. And one day we're going to get to see him, amen. And how comforting that is. The world needs that comfort. Yeah. You know what sheep produce? Comfort. You know what? It's comforting to know you're saved. If you don't know you're saved, the more chance than you're not. Or you're just plain mixed up. I tell you, it's not comforting not knowing that you're saved. But we praise God. You know, I'll tell you, you can know it. I'll give you that comfort. Amen. Praise the Lord. You find that a sheep got hope. Sheep got some help, don't they? Aren't you glad we can? You know, that's what we do to one another. Perhaps today you need some comfort. We should encourage, exhort one another. We need to be praying for one another. That's what a sheep does. Along with that new coat, the coat that they have, uh, it's a different coat. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, it's as though your, it's as though your garment is uh, 
red as crimson, it should be white as snow. You know, I thought about that white, that white wool there. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, it describes Jesus, his hair was, was white as wool. And you know, the coat that the sheep has, the ideal coat of a sheep is, is white. It's when they have many, can do many different things with that color wool. And you know what? God wants to use you. But the only way he can use you is make sure you've got that white. Amen. You know how you get white? Through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. He gets us cleansed, amen. Yeah. amen. Doesn't mean we don't get dirty. But praise God, amen, the cleaner we are, the more he can use us. We find that the sheep here has a different, <coughs> different coat, a different comfort. I, I like the sheep, amen. I, I'm a sheep, amen. Praise God. I hope you're all sheep here this morning. You know what sheep do? They have a different, uh, they have a different uh, gathering. It's easier to, to keep a sheep in a pen than it is a goat. Now, I never really dealt with goats. Some of you had some goats, I know. And uh, I really had no desire to have a goat, okay? Uh, you know, uh, I just didn't go become sheep, amen? <laughs> but uh, there's nothing wrong with goats, but... Uh, uh, physically there. But uh, you'll find it's interesting, even though what we call a, a, a gathering of goats, it's interesting. You know what it's called? A tribe. Wow. That's what a bunch of goats is called. When they get together, it's a tribe. Sounds like it's on the war. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, that's what goats are. When they get together, they're called a tribe. When sheep get together, you know what we're called? We flock together. Amen. And there's something that I was reading about the sheep. They have it in their instinct. They have an instinct to flock together. Amen. Goat don't have that. And you know what? I had a desire to come together this morning. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Now, you just didn't get up one day and say, I decide I'm going to go to church now. I'm just going to change my ways. That's how some people, just because you go to church don't mean you're a does not mean you're a sheep. But there's a desire that God put in you. Because you know what? I like to be with God's people. Yeah. Not only I like to be with God, but you know what? That gathering, you know what that flock is? I'm just going to tell you it's church. I don't know where else you all meet together. It's fellowship. We met together this morning. Amen. As a flock. Sheep like to do that. Goats are sitting here saying, when can I get out? Uh-oh. <laughs> what time is it? Getting kind of late. We like to gather. You know, I like to worship the Lord. He deserves my worship. Amen. I can't worship Him enough. Now, praise God, don't you just stay here. Just say, I'll wait to worship next time. You need to worship Him every day. Yeah. But she like to gather and worship you know what they like to do? They like to comfort one another. I get so tired of folks saying, well, I don't need church. No, maybe you don't, but if someone else does, and we're come to exhort and encourage one another. Amen. Amen. It's not all about you. Sure. And you know what? A sheep knows that. They want to spread some comfort. I want to spread some comfort this morning. I hope you have that desire. But there's a gathering, amen. They're not like a goat. We find there's a, a different attitude that sheep have. You know, I, I shared there that uh, sheep give of their coat. Now, when I say give it, <laughs> that's kind of uh, not really the correct word. Yeah. I don't know if you ever watched sheep getting sheared. They didn't say, her, oh, oh, it's my turn. Let me go first. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know what? Uh, it is a sacrifice. And you know what? They, they give a living sacrifice. And you know when that, when that sacrifice is over? I can't help but think. Now, I can't get in the mind of a sheep. But you know what it's saying? It felt good. <laughs> Feels good! They do that down here at the fair. They'll shear them things. I mean, it's hot there. Boys, I got rid of that. Got rid of that weight. Got rid of that wool. And there's a different attitude, amen, when it comes to, to giving to God, amen, as a child of God, as a sheep of God. It's not always easy, folks. Sometimes it's hard. 
We'll have Vacation Bible School here again pretty soon. Amen. And woo, I'm excited. Amen. Oh my. I tell you, I never, I am always so excited when it's over. I, 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 praise God, you know, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's hard work. But you know what? It feels good. You know, it feels good to do something for Jesus, don't it? Amen. Amen. Even though sometimes it might hurt. Even sometimes it might be convenience. But you know what? A sheep have a different outlook on that. Amen. Say, boy, that feels good. Mm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you a sheep or your goat? Amen. I want to make sure that you're a sheep here this morning. And, and there's something I tell you, I, I just want to dwell on this a little bit. I get tired. I get tired of it. And I just, I do. I get kind of fired up. I go knocking doors all over here. And I say, well, uh, are you saved? Oh, yeah, I'm saved. I said a prayer. I got baptized. And saved. I did all this. And then I go, when do you go to church? Mm. Yeah. Well, no. Ah, uh, it's not my thing. Hmm. I had an experience when I was a kid. I, I don't know. Good night! You know what? The, in the book of 1 John says, when you, if you know that you pass from life unto death, I mean death unto life, when you get saved, you love the brethren. Yeah, believe me. You know what I want to say? I don't believe you're saved. I can't say that. I ain't the judge on that. God knows the heart. But there's, some, there's, a, there's something wrong in a, in, a, in a sheep's life if they don't have a desire to be in church. Yeah. And uh, if you, 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 take, you can find God has a place. He wants to use you. Amen? Amen. You want to be used of God. Amen. And I tell you, I hear it all the time, all the time, but they're content to say, well, I'm a sheep. I don't believe it. You're a goat. Goats don't care to gather. Sheep do. There's something in them. Uh, you know what? God put it in you. Amen. There was a time before you got when you were a goat. You know how it was. I ain't going over there. And you know what? Uh, praise God. They they have a different gathering. They've got a different uh, attitude. Amen. They've got a, a different sound. Did you know uh, sheep and goats sound different? You have to listen close. I think tomorrow night when we go to the fair, I'm going to listen, see if I can tell. The goats, now, uh, this is, uh, they, they, they go with an M, meh. Okay? Sheep, they start with a B, meh. Kind of similar, isn't it? But it's not the same. I was reading about the people that raise them both. They said distinct. They're usually, they can tell. There's a definite difference in the sound they make. The, uh, I kind of put this on myself. I like this, the goat. The goat goes with an M. Mad. You know what? They're just playing mad all the time. <laughs> mad. Just like that one, I, I just, I just, it's a neighbor down the road from me. I tried to get him to come to church. They said, well, when I was a kid, there was something happened. You know, they're still mad. Yeah. Get over it. That was 20 years ago. Goats can't get let loose. They're still mad. They go through life mad. Hmm. Do you know what a sheep does? This is me. I know as I'm here this morning, I'll go bad. You know what I am? I'm bad. I, I realize I, I'm humble, amen. I, I'm not good. I'm not walking around with the tail up, amen. I got my tail down, amen. I, I realize I don't deserve anything that God has given me. Yeah. And I tell you every day, I gotta go, nah. Forgive me. Aren't you any wonderful? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's a different different sound. I know I, when I was working as a boy at work, and I, I tell you, I got to got hear him, and he got talking about doing this, going to church. You know, he was saying. And so I listened. And uh, I tell you what, uh, all I heard was cursing. And before I left, I thought to send him an email, and I wanted to say, and I wouldn't say, and if I had this message in my mind, I'd say, are you sure you're not a goat? There's something wrong with that conversation. 
I like to meet new people at times, and I, and I wonder. First thing that comes to my mind, I wonder if they're saved. Amen. Maybe right. that doesn't come to your mind, but it ought to. Yeah, that's right. Mm. It comes to my mind, I wonder if they're saved. And you try to listen to the conversation. You know, eventually, after the conversation, now sometimes it can be tricky. Somewhere down the line, I think, man, maybe they said something. And you know what? Wouldn't it be good? You know, by the way, Peter was trying to hide himself as a Christian. He was around the campfire that day. He said, you're one of Jesus's, aren't you? No, not me, not me. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can tell by the way you talk. Isn't that amazing? And old Peter, he was, he was, he was being a bad sheep. He even talked bad. He tried to cover it up. Do you know what? Praise God, there's something different about our speech. Amen. you find, uh, you know, it was part of the change that took place in our lives. We find this morning, uh, I thought it was kind of interesting, uh, and I've shared this before too, and I'm just sort of reminded about what, you know, Jesus said, the sheep are on the right hand, the goats are on the Sheep in. There's a diff one, one big difference between a sheep and a goat, which is miraculous to me. Goats are one of two mammals. There's a lot of mammals in the world that are land creatures, not sea creatures. Two, one of two, them and rabbits are the only two that have this trait a goat and a rabbit. I don't know why the rabbit's in this category, but a goat does not have a tear duct. Isn't that awful? You know what? A sheep has tears. You know, there's a difference between a sheep and a goat. You know, there was a year, uh, think of that song, your Calvary years of spending vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. There was a time in my life I didn't care. But you know, one of the sure signs that you're a sheep, when you get saved, You've got a compassion for the lost. If you don't keep you here this morning, so I don't care about anybody can say it. You're a goat. But when you got saved, you know what? Maybe you had a brother, or a husband, or a wife. He said, you know what? I want them to know this Jesus. And you know what it does? You've got children, you've got grandchildren. And you know what? My, my, my wonderful focus for all my family is I want them to know Jesus. I'll shed a tear. Goats don't. I don't understand it. I see, I see people talking all the time. You know, I understand yourself and making that stance and ah, I don't need church. I don't need the Lord. I'm all right. And then you see running around there, they got a bunch of kids. Boy, you know what I want to do? I want to strap them down. I want to give them a kick. I want to, I want to rough them up. Not the kids, the parents. Okay. Those kids need to know about Jesus. Amen. And we got children running all around. No one seems to care. When you get saved, you know what? It's very miraculous. Yeah, you'll care about your family. But you know what? You'll even you'll care about your friends. Do you know what God puts in you? You even care about the stranger. Yeah. You say, I don't know if I'm saved or not. You care about that stranger whether they're saved or not. I tell you, I do this a lot of times. I sit in the mall. My wife shopping, she's in that whatever store it is there for hours, it seems like. I'm sitting there and I watch all the people. And you know what goes through my mind? I'm kind of weird. You know what? Because I'm sheep. And I look at these people and I think, I wonder, they're coming through like cattle. I wonder who's saved. And you know, it's a sad thing. I'm confident many aren't. And all oh, how they need to know about the Lord. You know what? You know, I know I have that. I tell you, sometimes we have doubts about our salvation. And I tell you what, if you, if you desire that others might know about Jesus, that's a sure sign. You've got a tear duck. Amen? Mm -hmm. Goats don't have that. We have the Bible says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. We need to use those tear ducks, don't we? Amen. Yeah. Goats, and, they're a little different. They have different eating habits. Goats are browsers. 
I mean, I tell you what, I don't know until about ghosts, but they'll go over here, they'll leave something down there, then they'll come up over here, then they'll go up to the tree there, jump up high, they'll try this, they'll even go to the trash, and they'll eat that, ain't it? They're not too concerned, sheep aren't that way. Sheep are browsers, and I mean grazers. They graze. And you know what? The, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. Amen. You find there, He gives us the green pastures. You know, once you come to Jesus, you found something you're satisfied with. Good. Amen. You know, I like to graze on the Word of God. Anybody like the Word of God? I tell you what, a, a, sheep, a sheep likes the Word of God. Uh, you know what they like? They, they don't mind, uh, they don't mind uh, a hard preaching. That's right. And you know what I'd say? Hard preaching? All you have to do is read the Word of God. It's hard. Mm. It'll get you. A goat. You know why? You know, if we have no goats here, they don't like to hear the Word of God, really. Goats really don't want to come to the house of God because you know what they want to hear? They don't want to hear someone point out their sin. You know what? I'm glad someone pointed out my sin. Because yeah. you know what it showed me? I was in trouble. You remember the day you realized you were in trouble? And they also told you about, praise God, a Savior that came to take us out of trouble. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I love the Word of God. I tell you, I, I know I don't, I don't partake of it as much as I should. Amen. But praise God, I've always had a love. I've shared this before. I'm not a reader. And I, when I was in school, if I had to read a book, I didn't do it. But there's, there's one book that I have a love for, amen. I want to know more about. Praise the Lord. That's what a sheep is, amen. Well, I just got two more things. It's amazing. There's other things about a sheep and a goat. A, a sheep has a different effect as it goes through this life. You know what it does? It has scent glands in its, between its, on its hooves. Wherever it goes, it leaves a scent. Goats don't have that. Say, boy, oh boy, is that good, Brother Brad? I tell you what, you know what? I want to leave something behind, don't you? I want to leave something for my kids. I want to leave something for my grandkids. I want to leave something when I meet these folks down the road. I want to leave them something, amen. What the Bible said, how precious are the, the feet, it says here. It says, how beautiful the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, amen. You know what I want to leave behind? The precious God. Sheep does that. Goats don't. I want to make an impression. I want to be used of God. Mm. If you're a child of God, if you're a sheep, you want to be used of God in some form, some fashion. We're all different. We're all different parts, amen. But we have a desire to be used of Him. Well, the last thing, you know what the fact is a fact. Sheep. And goats are different. The fact is, you can get a blood sample. You get a blood sample of a sheep and a goat. They have different, can I say, chromosomes. The goat has 60. You come over to the sheep, it's got 54. It's pretty clear there's a difference. No one else can see it. You may fool the world in anything else, but there's a blood test. And I was thinking to myself, I tell you what, it's six. It's six less chromosomes. And you know what six is? The number in the Bible of man. You know when one gets saved, the old man gets dealt with. I like that. The old man got dealt with. The old man still wants to come in. But praise God, when you got saved, there's a, the Bible said you are a new creature. The old things are passed away. Praise God. The Bible said you must be born again. Amen. There was a day I was a goat. Might have been a good goat. I was a good goat, got to tell you. Might have been a grand champion goat. Grand champions aren't good enough. I realized I needed Jesus. And you know what? It was through the blood. Amen. Woo! I'm, I'm not saved because I, 
I, I'm good. I'm bad, okay? <laughs> Amen? It came through the blood. Yeah, thank you. And if a blood test was done today, oh, you may convince yourself everything's all right, but how's the blood test? Praise the Lord. Amen. You know what? If you're saved, you're a sheep of the glory. Isn't it? Isn't it good to know that this morning? I tell you, why did I put a bounty in his death? I'm a sheep. He's coming to get me one day. Amen. But if you don't have that assurance this morning, that's awful. But I have a God that wants to give that assurance. Amen. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for looking down on a bunch of goats one time and realizing we were in trouble. And Lord, I don't know how the conversation went in glory, but <laughs> Jesus stood for us and I'll go. I'll go for them goats. I'm going to come down, I'm going to die on the cross for them. But I'm not just going to die, I'm going to live. They put their trust. They can change that old goat. And Lord, that one day when I come back, I'll separate the goat from the sheep. Lord, how good it is this morning to know that I'm a sheep. Lord, I'm not what I used to be. Maybe not what I should be, but Lord, I thank you, Lord, that change took place in my life. Help us, Lord, this morning. Help us examine ourselves. Lord, I want, I, I'm tired of folks saying they're sheep of reality, the devil's got to convince they're nothing more than a good goat. Help us, Lord, I pray. Help us, Lord, that we might stand out. Help us, Lord, the world might see something. Help us, Lord, we might make an effect, make a difference in this life. Lord, speak to our hearts. You know what we are this morning and you know what we can be. Help us to come to you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. You know, if I asked everybody this morning, are you a sheep or are you a goat? And you say, well, I'm a sheep because I feel like I am. There's some facts. There's a difference between a sheep and a goat. The devil likes to convince everyone, ah, you're all right. It'll be okay. It's an urgent matter. One day, he's gonna, the Lord is going to come back. He's going to do the blood test. He's going to search the heart. He knows this morning. And I tell you what, I want everybody to be a sheep. I want everybody to know that they're a sheep. We've got family members. Oh, they may get baptized. They may say a prayer, but I tell you, their life don't show it. There's something wrong. No matter what they say, how many times they tell you? I'm concerned about it. We ought to be concerned about it. There's a difference. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the day I was born again. A change took place that day. You have that day.